Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and you know what time it is. It's time for another repot with me. Although a while ago, I think I was picking some rot off some plants that I got in on an import and someone suggests, why don't you just call it D-Rot with me? So honestly, that's probably what this video is because as it happens, I'm gonna be cutting off some rot today. Basically what's happened is, just in full transparency, that box of plants that has been sat there for the last two repots, would you believe it if I told you I still wasn't through it? That's how busy I've been. And what has happened is the ones that I've done in previous videos, they went into a bucket and that bucket hasn't had its water changed. That bucket has just been sat, basically. So the predictable has happened and those plants now have rot. So basically most of the roots that came in on these plants are gone, done, gone, not there anymore. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to remove that rot. It's completely my fault. It's because I haven't had time and everything else. So today I'm gonna to do that. It's probably gonna stink. It's probably gonna get a bit minging. I'm gonna get shit on my hands and I hate having shit on my hands. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can't see the plants at the minute. I'm gonna pull them out of this bucket and it's probably gonna be gross, but that is what we're doing today. And as usual, I have some of your questions. So let me get these up first, shall I? Because this is gross, let me tell you. It's just gross. Maybe it's not that bad, maybe it's, Maybe it's Maybelline. Oh, ugh, oh, it stinks. Oh my God. Oh, it's nasty, that. Let me see if I can show you the water that they've been in. I have absolutely no shame in telling you this, guys. Literally no shame at all. Ugh, you probably can't see. Can you see a little bit? I have to tip it to the point where it's gonna come out there. You can sort of see the water that it's been in. Absolutely stinks of arse is what these plants stink of. That's, that's nasty. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So it's a good job that none of us have smell vision because this stinks. So I'm going to get started with a question. <laughs> I'm going to start this in the same way that I started the last one because it's just, it seems like the go-to update. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about horse related stuff because I know so many of you probably follow my Twitter and that's probably where I've been dropping the biggest hints. So I had loads of people asking me questions like, you know, um, are you buying a horse? What breeds are you um, into? How's your riding going? Did you find somewhere new? Uh, what else was there? You know, do you want to do like show jumping, dressage? Like what's the tea? There was literally tons of questions to do with horses. So I think the best thing to do is to give you a general update. I've had some good times and bad times with horses. <laughs> to be honest. Um, if you don't want to hear any of this horse talk, by the way, I'll put a timestamp here of where the horse talk ends because this might go on a little bit. Um, I'll do my best to keep it succinct, but so much has happened. I could almost do a video about it on my second channel. If you are interested in that, let me know and I might do it, even though it's going to stick out like a sore thumb on my second channel. I think it could be quite interesting because I have been looking for a horse recently and I've kind of learned so much on my journey about horses, about people, about how to read ads, about like what I was looking for and then what I am looking for and just, just so much stuff. Um, so if you really are interested, um, let me know in a comment, you know, get people to like it, whatever, you, however you want to do it. And I will think about making that on my second channel. It will literally just be me sat down talking to you about what has happened, um, basically. But so, um, in terms of the riding school thing, I haven't really managed to find a new place. I'm back at the second place I talked about. If you remember way back then, I said that I went to... Um, I went to three places anyway to, to test riding schools. The first one was just, mm, okay. The second one was great. And the third one was, mm, okay. So I've had to basically do a mixture of lessons between the second one, which is the one I loved, and the third one. Two seconds. Oh, are they all right? Oh, they aren't dead. That is though. Oh God. This is just not nice, is it? I'm lucky with this. That's alive. That's actually really lucky that that's happened on the first one. Because let me tell you, the rest of them are not like that. So that's really good. We'll put that there. Ugh. Still stinks though, because it's been in the same order. So I'm basically doing a combo of lessons there because there are no lessons available. And I have to take cancellations. I don't have like a regular slot each week. So if no one cancels that week, I don't get lessons basically. So I'm taking what I can get. So that's a thing. I have been having some more lessons uh, where I have been able to get them. So I have been able to get some lessons. It's just, it is on a cancellation basis. And I guess with it being back to school, maybe a lot of the kids have cancelled. I don't really know. Uh, but it, it hasn't gone too badly anyway in terms of that. Sorry, if you hear a lot of banging, by the way, there's clearly a truck outside doing its worst for noise right now. So yeah, that's been the thing. And that's where we're at with that. That's shaking my entire unit. We're obviously emptying something around the back. 
So we'll try and ignore that. So that's been a thing, generally. Um, not ideal at all, but it's basically what I've had to do. So I think I mentioned in the last report with me that I am looking for a horse um, to have in a livery. And oh my God, <laughs> this has been a, the insanest journey ever because the first thing you have to do if you want a horse and you don't have anywhere to put it, then you're going to have to find somewhere to put it. So essentially, I'll shorten this down. That's what I did. I think I spent a week looking at liveries and I ended up finding an absolutely stellar livery. Like that's, that's just going to be a great place to put a horse. I can just tell. Um, so I found that after a week. That was week one. Once I'd found um, a livery, it was time to start looking for basically a horse. And I think I've been looking for, I want to say two to three weeks, which feels like a long time, but in the scheme of things, it's probably not long at all, really. So I've been looking to buy a horse and it, I had like requirements when I started my hunt, like everyone probably does. You know, I want this color. I want this. I want that. I want this magical thing that ticks all of my boxes. I don't want to settle, blah, 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 blah. And I think it, it basically, I've, I've viewed a couple of horses, um, already. And I think your requirements change based on, you know, your reaction to trying a horse. And, um, my very good friend who has been helping me along this journey, by the way, um, actually said to me at a point, cause I was like, how will I know if it's the right horse when I go and test this horse? How will I know? Cause I know that I'm pretty novice at the minute. You know, I need something like that, but that's not all of it. You know, my friend basically said, it's like avatar. You sit on a horse and you, you more or less know it's right for you very quickly. Um, so I went through a couple of horses that were not right for me for very different reasons. I've met good people throughout my journey so far. Um, I've met shitheads <laughs> so far as well. People with like just more money than manners. You know what I mean? And that goes for horse owners and livery owners. I had that too. My God. Um, I've kind of learned a lot about people along the way, which I actually didn't expect at all. But basically I've been looking for a horse and I have settled on the third horse that I've looked for. So what I'm saying is I am getting a horse in, I think a week tomorrow, actually, as it happens, as I'm filming this, I don't know when you guys will see this. I think you're seeing this in a couple of weeks time. So by the time you see this, I should have my horse, which is so exciting. I can't even tell you. I'm terrified. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely terrified beyond belief, but I'm also excited. And I know that the journey is going to be a, an interesting one, a fun one, a long one, a worthy one. I'm taking all the steps to ensure that where my horse is, it's, it's a top livery and they specialize in rehabilitation. So they have a lot of healthcare surrounding the livery. So basically the things that I don't know about horse care and I'm not totally clued upon my livery owners do and they're very on it with stuff like that so that's probably the one thing that's allowed me to get a horse because if it wasn't for that i wouldn't be ready does that make sense so i have absolute professionals around me that will help me out and generally look after the horse on my behalf if something goes wrong it is literally the kind of livery where i could not rock up for a month if something went badly wrong and the horse would be absolutely fine. It, he would be exercised. He would be taken care of. He would be weighed each week, like all of that. There would be a vet visit once a month, blah, blah, blah. It's all taken care of. So that's really awesome. But I'm just super excited about it, guys. I really am. I've, there was a moment where I just thought, oh my God, can I do this? Um, but yeah, I'm getting a horse and it's a he, it's a gelding. Uh, I don't want to tell you too much about him because he's very special to me. And I just don't want to, I don't put something on the internet yet. I'm not ready. But if you want to know about like the buying process, how I was thinking and feeling along the way, like the stuff I thought I wanted and stuff like that, if you're interested in it, I can either do it in a future report or I can do it in a standalone video. I'm sure you all will meet him eventually. It's not something I'm going to keep a complete secret or anything. Um, I'm just, I don't know when really. No doubt I won't be able to keep him off social media in terms of photographs and stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if you met him very soon. I don't think you'll have met him already. I'll make sure you don't meet him before this comes out at least. Otherwise that's just weird. Um, but I'm so excited to meet him guys. I honestly am terrified, but excited. So um, in a couple of days, actually, I've got to go shopping for just all of the whole stuff, all of it. I don't have anything. So that's going to be a very nice price tag on all of that when I go to a shop and basically have to buy literally everything in existence for this horse, but I'm ready for it. Who needs children? 
I already have one now. So <laughs> I'm really, really excited for that. So I didn't want to talk your ear off with horse stuff because I, I don't think everyone is interested, but that is basically the tea. On that, I've bought one. So a few people asked some other things that I mentioned earlier. One was, what breeds do you like? And one was, you know, what do you want to be doing? What do you like? Show jumping, dressage, all the rest. We'll start with show jumping, dressage, etc. I don't know what I want to do yet because, I mean, I rode horses as a kid, but like I, I did pony club. It wasn't anything insane. Um, I have a lot to consider now with my back and stuff like that. So I don't really know, quite honestly, what I want to do. I can really tell you what I enjoy watching. And if it comes to watching stuff, then I enjoy show jumping the most. So we'll see. But if I was going to do something, you know, a bit competitive on a, like a local small scale level, maybe jumping, I think. I'm not really sure. I'm, again, I'm not thinking about it. I think my journey is going to be a, a longer one than that. And it will probably be a year before I even consider that. So let's see how it goes. Right now, I'm just focusing on getting my confidence up, knowing what the hell I'm doing sitting a canter properly because that's an issue for me. Sorry, I'm just cutting a shit ton of raw here as we talk. This is nasty. And yes, I am being heavy handed. Gets to the point when things are this badly rotted. There's not a lot of point being sterile about it, to be honest. You feel me? So, oh God, it stinks of shit. It stinks of shit. There we go. Is that all right? Probably is for now. Ugh. These are probably going to need two rounds of cutting, by the way, guys, because this is nasty. Like, this is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Stinks of fart don't like it, don't want it, don't want it, I don't want it in my shop. It's hard because some of these look fine and then you find out that they're actually broken roots anyway, even though they are fine, which means you know fine well they're going to rot. So yeah, that's my update. That's it. Again, it, it's something that I don't really want to put on YouTube too much because it's for me, it's very sacred. I'm not having haters even fucking touch that shit. I'm not interested. So he will be heavily protected um, from the internet, put it that way. I will share what I share and I will not share what I will not share but he is going to be very well looked after. He's going to be very spoilt. Um, as I say, you will see a photograph of him. I promise I will introduce him. Uh, oh yeah, breeds. Oh my God, breeds. So breeds, I have a thing for Irish breeds. Um, I don't know what it is about Irish breeds. I just really like them. I don't love the Welsh too much. I know my friend does. I, I like Welsh not so much. They're all right. I don't know. Something about their faces. I feel like that's where they've come up with the idea for like the Welsh dragon designs because it looks very similar. Um, they're all right. I just, they're not my favorite. I really, really like Irish breeds. I think they are the tits, um, that, and I do like Andalusian and stuff like that, but it's not necessarily the best for me as a rider or just the situations that I'm going to be facing over here. Um, same thing as like thoroughbred, stuff like that. Absolutely not. I'd like to ride a horse, not a dragon. I know that my ability is not equipped for that. Nothing against them, just they are beyond my ability, everything else. So yeah, that's what I prefer. Irish, Irish breeds. There's a big hint. So if you want to guess what you think I've actually bought, because he is Irish, um, let me know down below if you're into your horses and you're into your Irish breeds. I'm really curious. Really, really curious, actually. Um, oh, he's just the loveliest boy anyway. Anyway, I'm going to move on from that because I feel like we will just talk horses the entire time. And a lot of people probably... To be fair, don't give a shit. So we will move on. Just let me get this rot off. Let's take these away. I'm going to put them on the floor. And what's going to happen is they will get treated, I think, and then put into clean water. Because honestly, that is still all I can do for today. That's how ridiculous it is. These lot are a mixture of unpacking and rot because they're very, very wet. But hopefully they're not as bad. So I have nothing to wipe my hands on except for my jeans. I hate that, you know. I hate having to do that. I hate not planning ahead. Mmm, Invisalign update, living wall update. I will keep these ones a little bit shorter because they really are less interesting. Um, we'll start with living wall update. Basically, we've had some problems again with the living wall. And I think, honestly, it's because the light levels have dropped. I will describe what's happening now. I'm kind of looking past my softbox to the living wall. So the top half of the wall is looking all right, actually. There's a little bit of crispiness uh, around my Queen Anthurium has actually taken a bit of a beating. Not the big one, although that is also a bit shit. There's a smaller one at the top. That's a bit shit. Generally, the plants at the top of the wall are fine. Um, tree boys are fine. They're nearly at the ceiling now. I will show you them at some point. Now, once you get halfway down the wall, there are less plants and they start to become less and less plants. All the major big plants, like the big Monstera, the... Is it Philodendron? Weeks Red, the big Plamania in the bottom, all of those are fine. But a lot of the plants that are on the wall at the bottom are not fine. And a lot of them have actually rotted into nothing. 
so they don't exist anymore, um, leaving me with really quite big gaps. So I'm going to assume it's light because I can't detect anything wrong with the water. The wetness of everything seems fine and everything else. I'm going to assume it's light because this has happened to me before. This happened to me before I got the lights on my shelves. Through winter, I didn't have these up yet and it was not, it, it wasn't good. There were things rotting because they didn't get enough light. I know it was light because when I put the lights in, it stopped happening, which leads me to believe that this is light. So it's a bit shit and it's going to need another patch up because obviously I was on a holiday for two weeks. I then went to a horse show for a week. It's just... I just haven't had time to do it. Hence, you know, we've got this problem as well. So it will be fine, but it's going to need a patch up, I think. And it's going to need blasted with light. So I'm going to get my scissor lift, which I think you can see. Yes, in the corner, it's fixed. I'm going to mount lights on the side of it, which they're actually awesome on the side of it, my Telos lights. I'm going to park it where I am right now. And I'm going to raise it a little bit. I'm just going to point the lights at the wall and give them some, some, some energy, really. And then once we see a bit of perking up, then I will be monitoring the feed and getting them up and going um, just to nurture what's there. And then we will add when that is stable. It's getting to the point where I think I'm going to have to have a more permanent solution than that because I don't think these guys are getting enough light at the bottom. But we will see. So basically, the wall does look a bit shit right now. Hence, I'm not stood in front of it because it does look shit. So that is the wall update. That is what I have for you at the moment. And that's been very recent development. That's why it just hasn't been mentioned till now. Um, the Invisalign update. My teeth are... All right, they probably caught lipstick on them because I wore a bit of an out there lipstick today. Those are my teeth at the minute, guys. Um, they're a little bit stained, actually, because when I was on holiday, on my all-inclusive holiday, I had to drink with them in um, because it, it just wasn't going to happen any other way. And I was drinking Diet Coke and it stained down the, the composite bonds. So my teeth, unfortunately, don't look very white anymore. I don't know if you can tell. You probably, maybe you can, maybe you can't because of the soft boxes. But they could be better. Um, straightness, they are nearly there. There's a wonky one down here at the front where I had to close that gap, if you remember. There's a little bit wonkiness over here. There's one that's like a little bit off. But generally, we're nearly there. I would guess I've probably got another 14 weeks left, maybe. I've submitted for refinements now, so I'm on the same tray. So my teeth are going to get even worse looking if the tray kind of stains down because that happens. It's going all right. The light is at the end of the tunnel kind of thing because you must be able to tell these are quite straight now. Um, and anything that doesn't look straight, it's because there's like not a tooth there when it should be there. Uh, but it's pretty good. I'm very happy. Do I regret it? No. Still very, very, very happy with the outcome. I'm just kind of getting a bit sick of it now. Um, but I absolutely do not regret it. It's been one of the best things ever. My palette has changed so much. My smile has changed so much. If, if I smile now, like if you look at other videos of me a year and a bit ago, my whole face has changed because of my smile. I think I look better. So I'm really, really happy I did that. Very, very good. I'm just a bit thick of the refinements, really, guys. It's just a bit annoying, isn't it? It's not ideal. Right. This, that's shit because it snapped. I'm trying to assess how bad this is. That's shit because it snapped. That has rotted. I will give it that. What's happened to that? That's snapped and rot. A lot of this is snappage, actually. I think that's down to the supplier. Definitely. Because that's not bad. And the new roots have come in. Great. We like those. Just the rest of them. So that one's not bad. I'm not going to pull too much moss off that because I know that it's fine. It doesn't need the moss pulled off that. Um, that's yellow, but I think I might leave it. Laura's leaf. You know what? I'll take that off because why not? I'm not really in the business of cutting leaves off today. I'm just kind of doing it for that. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm left with, to be honest. It's, it's not the best, is it? But it is what it is. All right, so I'll put that on this side, actually, and then I will try again to wipe all this shit on my pants, and then we'll get another cluster on. Oh, this was funny and I have to, I have to really not beat about the bush with this one because I got a really weird mix of people sending me messages to do with hate, right? And I'm sorry. Yes, I'm going to bring it up again. You guys are literally asking me to bring it up. I know what it's relating to and I will get onto that a bit later. Not that I have a lot to say on that, by the way. Um, the whole variegated glory or something, but I got two different things sent to me in tandem and I was just like, okay. Um, it was more in favor of the second thing I'm going to say. So one person was basically saying, why do you keep entertaining haters? And everyone else was saying, how do you brush it all off and keep a smile on your face? Um, my fucking issue, to be honest, is with the type of person, not the actual person, the type of person that said the first thing, which is, why do you keep entertaining haters? I don't like that. And I reject that because I fucking don't, right? Now, if you'd said that to me, a year ago, honestly, I would sit here and go, right, fair game. 
because I think I did a year ago and it was when I was doing this place up. I got a lot of shit throughout the COVID thing, you know, blaming me for all the prices and all that bullshit. And it got harder and harder to ignore it because I was very run down and I, I, you know, I did get sucked into a lot of things like there was the bullying thing and all that sort of shit. Um, but generally since then, I honestly can stand here and say that I've grown so much from that and I've become so much more resilient. And evidently I have because everyone else is saying, you know, how do you do that? Um, there is no secret to how I do that. It's just, I guess I'm used to it, which you can either look at that morbidly or positively. Um, I don't really know if it's positive or not, but it's a situation. You know what I mean? I'm resilient to it because I know it's born from jealousy. I know that every time I get, you know, talked about or there's a big thing, it's like, right, it's promo at this point. Now, th there is a thing where it's like, um, I was talking about this the other day, actually, but there is a thing that people say was like, no publicity is bad publicity. And it's like, I agree, unless the person is actually a serious asshole, right? I think if you are a serious asshole, the publicity you are going to get is probably just bad publicity. And if you are growing, people are growing to watch you basically fall apart. Like, I, I genuinely believe that. I think there is a line to that. I don't think for everybody, you know, all publicity is good publicity. Um, I think in my case it is. Sorry. But if someone's spreading around the internet that I'm a massive asshole, what has happened a lot of times, and I always laugh at this, people come onto my channel saying that some hate group brought them here. And they say to me, like, I've watched a few of your videos today, actually, and you're not that at all. Or they'll, they'll basically just have a complete and utter shift in opinion. And it's like, thank you very much, because fucking haters brought these people here. And they're coming here and they're seeing that a lot of it's bullshit. Now, I'm not perfect. I can be an asshole. In some ways, I am an asshole, but I'm not a complete asshole. You know what I mean? A lot of the time, I'm just honest and people just don't like what I say. And I'm honest to either my detriment, maybe to someone else's detriment, but I am always honest. Um, the amount of times I've shot myself in the foot saying stuff on videos about, you know, don't buy this plant, even though I've got like <laughs> 200 behind me or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I pride myself on honesty. People aren't always going to like what I say. Welcome to life, I guess. That's not my problem. And I've learned that it's not my problem, guys. Um, I've learned that people will have something to say quite simply because I'm a woman in business. I tell you what, a lot of people don't seem to like that, do they? Does it bother me? No. Because people are literally fueling my desire at this point. Like, I've learned how to harness the shit to propel myself forward. So if you are sat at home hating on me and you're wanting to broadcast it all over the internet, be very careful because I'm riding off those waves, let me tell you. Look at my face. I'm pretty happy right now. I'll, I'll go into it because it, it does kind of tie into it quite nicely, actually. Um, plus, I'm, I'm kind of sick of having fart on my hands. So, hang on. Am I going to cut all that? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, I am. There we go. The very gay glory awesome thing. If you don't know, um, Pamela P did a great video on basically the situation. And I actually spoke to her about it for the video. So, I will link that down below if you want to know exactly what happened. But you may or may not have heard, I tried to sell one of my Variegate Glory Awesomes. Oh, by the time you see this, maybe two, three weeks ago now. Um, as I'm filming this, it's about a week and a bit after. So it'd be a bit more for you now. Um, I'll link the video all the same that Pam did because it is good. And it is, in my opinion, very impartial. For example, she doesn't agree with like the planet auctions and stuff like that, which is fair game. Um, so I'll link that down below if you want to know fully what happened. But basically, I tried to sell a plant and the internet just wasn't having it. <laughs> and they made fake bids on the auction um, and tried to run up the the price, basically, to price everyone else out. I don't know why people think that I was part of that. I don't know why people think I've got the time to do that when I can't even unbox, you know, a load of plants. I don't know why people would think I would bother to inflate my own plant on auction day when I could have just slapped it all over YouTube videos and put photographs of it absolutely everywhere and tried to inflate it that way, right? I don't know why people think I need to do that. I didn't need to do that. Um, neither did Enid at NSA. She did nothing wrong at all. But, you know, people didn't like it. And I expect it's because it's an expensive plant. I got accused of flipping it, which is so funny to me. I honestly, I cackled. I actually cackled when um, somebody accused me of doing that. How can I flip a plant over, what was it, two years? And if I was going to flip a plant over two years, which doesn't make sense, why would I not just sell that in the middle of the pandemic when it was at its highest point? Like, I'm not the smartest woman in the world, but I'm definitely not an idiot. 
And if I was going to do that, there are select points in time that you could pick out very easily where I could have done that. I have no interest in doing that. I have previously sold the plant, by the way. A few nurseries have it. You will see it kicking about. I have sold this plant for an insane value of money. It's insane to me anyway, because it's like fucking hell, because I've made no secret of it. I bought that plant for, I think it was either $1,700 or $1,800 at an auction on Facebook in 2019, which I think at the time worked out like 1,400 pounds. I make no secret of what I paid for things and everything else. But again, people just had an issue with me selling it. And it's like, you think you did damage because you stopped an auction. It's like, joke's on you, I can sell it privately. It's just people wanted to buy it. So I thought I'll make it public. Despite having saying, what was it? Was it like a month beforehand or something? I said on one of these reports, like, you know, this is why collectors sell things privately because the plant community are just, most of them are nasty about it. Guess it proved my point, right? So joke's on you really, because again, everyone was talking about me. I mean, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about most of this actually, because I was at a horse show for my birthday, but the internet just couldn't leave me to it for a weekend, could they? But yeah, to, to link that back around, by the way, um, the Gloriosum is being sold privately. If you'd like to buy it, please get in touch. Um, it is selling for a large amount of money. Um, I don't, I don't want to put the price out there because I'm due a second wave if I do, right? Um, if you're a nursery or a, a private collector, then get in touch via my shop and we will do our best to accommodate you. And that's that, really. I'm not, I'm not going to sell it publicly again if that's what people are wondering. Um, I did say this to Pam for her video. I'm not going to sell it publicly again because clearly the internet's just having none of that. But honestly, joke's on you because I've only benefited from that. Like, I don't, honestly, I don't understand what these people get out of it. And I didn't understand this last year because I was, um, you know, not confident. I was very naive. I thought the world hated me. I just woke up and realized that they fucking don't. And the people that do have only helped me. They've only helped me. Because I said this on a, I think on my mental health video, you know, if everyone's talking behind your back, then you are the bitch in front. And I am the bitch in front. And I'm not even worried about coming across cocky in what I'm saying right now because I'm, I'm not a cocky person. It's just, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not cockiness. It's just a lack of giving a shit that's led me to this point. So honestly, I brush it off most of the time. Now, of course, there will be something that comes along in the future, no doubt, that I can't brush off and it, it, it affects me a lot. Obviously, I'm a fucking human being. Um, I don't know why people think that because you have an, a number now next to your name, it detracts from the fact that you're a human being. That's really weird to me. Yeah, it, until that though, I'll be fine. I'm all right. I think you guys would know if I wasn't. The glory or something was just a minor inconvenience, really. And if anything, I'm, I'm pissed off that people would do that to Enid. Because I think, a few people have said this, but I think Enid was collateral damage in, in all of that. I don't think Enid was the target of it. Unfortunately, I think it was me. And I can only apologize to Enid on, you know, other people's behalf, because it's not right. It's just not right. Like, if you don't like the fucking price of something, for God's sakes, go and do something else. Do y'all, honestly, the people that did this, do you just walk into, like, Ferrari or something and just have a massive go at them and complain about their prices while standing in their shop? Like, what is it that you do in your spare time? I would love to fucking know. I would love to know. Because I just don't get how you function. Do you know what I mean? Um, I have screenshots of people admitting to doing that, by the way. So maybe don't do that again. I have screenshots of quite a few things that I haven't made public in case I need them. So do not think that you got off with that because you did not. I have what I need. Um, I'm just hoping no one does it again. To be honest, they can't necessarily do it again because I'm not going to auction again necessarily. Um, never say never, but I think I'm probably done with auctions, to be honest with you. Um, if that's how the internet is going to be. Because there's a couple of people I think were quite upset that they got outbid, but they don't know if they like could have had the plant before it went crazy. And there was serious interest for the plant. Like I say, if you are one of those people who are seriously interested and you, you haven't contacted us already, then do contact me. Um, I do have more than one. I don't know why people think I'm selling the one plant I had. Obviously, I've been propagating it. <laughs> well, do people think I'm fucking stupid? Honestly, I don't understand people. So if you do want one, get in touch. That is all I will say on the Gloriosum because I didn't really want to go into it. Um, it's called tea by the point you see it anyway. But if you want my opinion, that's basically it. People are dicks. It's not going to stop me. All these people are kicking off. Um, I'm just sat there totally not even knowing any of this, by the way, at a horse show, watching some horses run around. Literally, because Ben and Enid handled most of it. So 
I was shielded from a lot of the shit anyway, because Ben was never going to let me be stressed on my birthday, right? So I didn't even know about most of it. So whatever you tried to do, it didn't really have any effect, to be honest. I only said something, quite honestly, because of what was happening to Enid, because I didn't like that. Because it's one thing to do it to me, but Enid is quite a different kettle of fish. Enid's not used to this. Enid's done nothing wrong. Um, I mean, I don't believe I have, but I'll allow people to argue over that. Enid had nothing to do with it. So that's a large reason why I actually did speak up on my Instagram stories. Um, but to bring it back full circle, I'm really not going to be gaslit into thinking that, you know, I only take notice of the hate and I only respond to the hate and, and shit like that. I'm not, I'm not buying it, guys. I'm not, not doing it because I know I'm not. And I know that the ratio of shit I get versus what I respond to is just, it's doing that really. Um, for example, I only responded to that because of the Enid thing. Other than that, I kind of just leave things. Or maybe I'll say something really nicely. Um, and then I'll kind of move on from it. That's, that's a shame that. That's a, quite a good route. I don't know when that happened. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why people are saying that I, oh, for fuck's sake, have you seen this? I don't know why people are saying that, um, I always respond to haters. Clearly you just don't have eyes because I don't, I just don't. Um, if only you knew, literally. But that's it really. Um, I, I want to talk about this positively because it is positive. I've just learned how to harness the hate, which if you are a hater, be scared because I get quite motivated by hate now. So if you want me to not be successful, you can keep hating if you want. Obviously, I don't intend to stop you in any way, shape or form. Just to let you know, it is absolutely going to propel me further and further forwards at lightning speeds. Um, because it already has done. I think I've done quite a lot in the last few weeks. So... Yeah, I'll think about you when I'm riding my horse around my shiny new livery, not giving a single fuck about you. Isn't it funny how life works? Thank you so much for your support, guys. I really want to take it now to tell you how much I recognize the support and just the fact that you can see that I'm not trying to let shit get to me. And I hope you can tell by my demeanor today that although I have some salty things to say because I just don't want to beat around the bush anymore, I'm generally... I'm just chill about it and I, I do take things in my stride now because honestly some of the shit that I've had happen over my like YouTube career I just feel like if you can go through that you can go through most things so once one thing has happened once if it happens again it bothers me less so the more it happens the harder I become do you know what I mean and I get on the outside you don't see that because you just see all these terrible things happening. And it, yes, it is like that. But it gets to the point where you can just laugh at it and go, oh, you know, is it that person again? Oh, fucking hell, you know, what are they saying now? Or whatever. It just becomes something you can giggle at. You know, like I giggled at the weekend that my birthday was on. I was giggling at Ben going, well, it would be fucking something because it's my birthday, in it? Do you know what I mean? And I laughed about it. I laughed about it. Um, so... That is it. You just, you got to learn to do that. And I honestly thank everyone for being very um, supportive of me. Best word for it. You were just so supportive of me. You know, I, I really, really hear you. You all left me really nice comments. Um, just, you always do. I know you always do. And I, I do see it and I do hear it and I do love it. And I do thank you for it. Um, you guys are the reason that I do do what I do because you're lovely people. And I always think that a YouTuber's following is a reflection of them and what they put out to the world. And I think I just have the best fucking followers, guys. I just do. I think you're all very honest. I think you're very logical. I think that you aren't too hot-headed. I wouldn't say. I think if something goes down on my channel or someone writes something shit, I, I, I do watch what you guys do. I watch how people behave because if a follower of mine did overstep the line, then I would have to remove them you know, from being able to comment or whatever. But I see what you do and I see how um, just logical you are. And if anything, you just turn someone's argument back on them. You never attack anyone. You never call anyone names. And I love that. And I'm so proud to have a following that actually has a brain between the ears. You know what I'm saying? I'm really, really proud of the following that I have. So good job. Um, you can just tell that you're very well-rounded people. And yeah, we all have our shit. You know what I mean? But it's it's what you do that matters not how it is for you. You see what I'm saying? Just the support I got, for example, last week was it, when everyone was telling me to basically, well, everyone was just telling me what to do with my plants anyway. Um, I think you guys got pissed off before I did, which I was laughing about because I thought, shit, I have quite a long fuse now. 
Um, so yeah, I honestly, I see you and I, I love you so much. I think you're all great. And I love how level-headed you approach things because the last thing I want is a following that just jumps on stuff. You know, I'm not about that. I wouldn't do it. Can you imagine if I did? Oh my God. I just, I'm so proud to have you is basically what I'm getting at. And it is people like you that help me rise above stuff and stuff like that because I know that you see the bullshit. And a lot of times back in the day, back last year when... I would be fearful of haters and I would have to acknowledge them. So much of that was because I felt like I needed to address them. And I felt like I needed to address it for you guys. Now, what I mean by that is I had no barometer for who believed what, what people thought of me and everything else. So I felt like when I got hate for doing something, I felt like that I had to mention it and talk about it and explain my side to you guys because I respect you and I don't want you to think that of me. So that was such a large, that was like 95% of the reason why I would address haters. It's not because I'm fucking obsessed with them. It's a bit random. Do you know what I mean? It's because I wanted to clear the air and, and communicate to you what my position was on, you know, whatever the fuck it was. That's most of the reason why I've ever addressed most things. I mean, some things need addressing no matter what, of course. Um, sometimes I need to address things to put people in line because some shit is bullshit. Um, so I do that. But generally speaking, Honestly, I'm just so proud of you guys for just being nice people. Honestly, I don't know if anyone's told you that today, but you're a really nice person and I'm proud of you. And you seem like really good people. Obviously, I can't, I can't know you all, you know, super personally because it's just comments, but I do see the same comments crop up and, and things like that. And I kind of get a gauge for how people are and you're all a lovely bunch, honestly. And it doesn't really matter how many haters I get because clearly they are so outnumbered. And again, I'm speaking from a place of growth now, but, you know, compare that to me a few months ago and I, I didn't, it, it was hard to grasp that because all I ever got was shit most of the time. And I'm just so appreciative of all your positive comments because it has helped. It's helped me see that not everyone is a shithead, basically. So honestly, I want to thank you for that. And that is my position on, you know, acknowledging negative people. I don't do it. I do it when it needs done. If it doesn't need done, I won't. The thing with Enid stepped over a line and that was for Enid's sake when I told people to shut the fuck up um, and I would do it again. Um, things like making me out to be a bully because I clap back at someone saying something really shit. I could go on a whole rant about that. Um, I'll say that too because that's bullshit as well. So if it needs called out, I will. If it doesn't, I will ignore its existence generally and I'm happy for it. You know, I'm, I'm living my best life. So thank you very much for all your support. I do think... That is it for today. It felt like some of these were really smelly. And as I've done more, they're not smelly. But then again, that's from a separate place. So maybe the plants that are in like a tray down here aren't as bad. But the bucket stinks. I don't know. We've got some rot off. we got some of the packaging off. Again, I haven't done a lot. I probably have 10 plants left in that big, um, long square container that I had. I've got another pot to go through with root rot in it that I am not touching in this video. No one wants that, trust me. I'll get around to them soon, hopefully. Um, I have a horse coming, so <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit busy, so bear with me. Um, I do have some very good videos coming up, though, and I'm planning them right now. I just need to finalize a few things, but I have some really good stuff coming. It's just kind of being delayed a little bit, so... Thank you very much for your time today. Please leave a comment on anything you wish down below. I keep it respectful as always, even though I know you do. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye.